let's kind of get into it because this is such a fascinating subject. Uh, of course, you're a documentary filmmaker and, and your documentaries are just outstanding. Uh, what brought you to this particular story for um, A Wilderness of Error? Well, Aaron Morris's book, A Wilderness of Error, I mean, Jason Blum of Blumhouse had sent it to me. I had read it. I was making a podcast called Crime Town, and I just thought to myself, you know, maybe I should go see Errol and talk to him about it. And I sat down with him. He was so gracious. He was so open to a reinvestigation. He wanted somebody to do a deep dive into this crime that had been sort of litigated in the public eye for, for decades and try to come up with some answers. And I couldn't refuse. I mean, it's the most popularized true crime story in, in history, I think. And, you know, er, there had been so many people who had gone back and over this and it just seemed like maybe I could have the last word and maybe I could do something that would clarify the record. And did you get to that point? I mean, without giving away any spoilers, did you, did, did you find things that the police overlooked? Well, I think when it gets to motivations and character motivation, well, why people are doing things, it's not really the police job to figure that out. And I think that's what we really, we really dove into. You know, the, 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 the series is five episodes. We had the time to slow down and look at things and really, really examine the characters of the story and the events. So I think we definitely succeeded at that. And I don't, there's this woman back in 1970 who had started serially confessing to being in the house the night of the murders. She's probably the single reason why Jeffrey, Jeffrey's claim of innocence is still rattling in the courts system. And nobody really understood her. And we ended up talking to her family. We ended up talking to her roommate that she was living with when the murders were, happened. And I feel like we, 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 we answered some serious questions about her role in the story. Yeah, you're talking, of course, of the girl with the floppy hat. Of course, yeah. The mysterious girl with the floppy hat. Um, you know, but there are so many other aspects to this, uh, you know, particular story that th this is why it's been in the public eye for so long. Um, you know, Jeffrey McDonald was a Green Beret. You know, he was an upright, you know, citizen, basically. Uh, his wife was pregnant. All of those things are fodder for, for you know, the public and for the press. Uh you know, this is a high-profile case when it when it happened. It still is. It's a high-profile case today. I mean, this is a case that c continues to sort of um, reappear in the public consciousness. It's it's a case that just doesn't, never seems to to go away. Uh, putting this together, though, had got to have been a a huge task. Of, you know, going through all of the volumes of uh, of, of testimony and 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 police work. How did you do that? I mean, you know, is this a labor of love for you? I would, I would describe it more like a, uh, an addiction. <laughs> I mean, for me, court records are fascinating. And I know that, you know, if I am going to have a weekend with a 10-pound court transcript, I'm going to have a relaxing, interesting weekend. So for me, I think the, the investigation is... is is my favorite part of it. I, I, I like going back and looking at these things. It's not just because I want to figure out who did what and what. I'm more interested in the people and how, how they, they sort of intersect with the, the, the evidence chain and the chronology of what happened. Well, again, the, uh, the series is, of course, a, a wilderness of error. It's on FX. Uh, and then the next day it's on Hulu. Uh, you know, for people that, ha that have that uh, streaming service. We're all going to be watching. So, Mark, thank you so much for your time today, and, uh, and good luck in the future with everything you do. Yeah, thank you for having me. This celebrity interview is sponsored by... I'm Annette Severella with Pia Anderson Moss Hoyt, Utah's leading entertainment law firm serving clients nationwide. We provide solid, attentive representation, focusing on minimizing risk, reducing cost, and protecting the reputation and privacy of our clients. Our goal is to provide you with the legal representation you need to make the right decisions and to protect you and your creative works. Call or email me for a free consultation.